hear it echo. Raise a voice, hear it echo. He who loves his own, his own wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it, just as Christ also does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother, and shall be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. L.A., seven months from now, whenever it is. Uh, the L.A. Open, us three are sitting over, over coffee. And I'm looking at her and I'm like, she looks a little different. I'm like, huh, she's more beautiful now than she was when I married her. Why? Because she should be more beautiful next year because of the way you cared for her. Okay? Strong. And that's what the Lord does. Say, uh, love thinks sacrificially, cultivates beauty, and then lastly, and then we'll move in. It furthers intimacy. With this ring, I commit all my love to you. I commit all my love to you. I see you as a gift from God. I see you as a gift from God. And an answer to my prayers. And an answer to my prayers. I promise you. I promise you. My deepest love. My deepest love. And tender care. And tender care. I pledge to you my life. I pledge to you my life. As a loving and faithful husband. As a loving and faithful husband. I will seek to support and encourage you. I will seek to support and encourage you. Through all of life's challenges. Through all life's challenges. All that I am. All that I am. And half is yours. And half is yours. As long as we both show up. With this ring, I commit all my love to you. I commit all my love to you. I see you as a gift from God. I see you as a gift from God. And an answer to my prayers. And an answer to my prayers. I promise you my deepest love. I promise you my deepest love. And tender care. And tender care. I pledge to you my life. I pledge to you my life. As a loving and faithful wife. As a loving and faithful wife. I will seek to support and encourage you. I will seek to support and encourage you. Through all of life's challenges. Through all of life's challenges. All that I am and have is yours. All that I have and am is yours. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. It is my privilege now to pronounce you husband and wife. Harold, you may now kiss your beautiful bride. Hell yeah. <laughs> And uh, just the, the joy that you bring to a lot of people, Harold, is amazing. And then knowing Amanda the last few years and uh, getting to know you guys, Amanda, you're the perfect woman for Harold Barnes III. And I'm serious. Fast forward a few years and I finally convinced Amanda to move to Charlotte. <laughs> Maybe a week later, she calls me and says, guess who lives in the Charlotte area? And I, she went on to ask me if I remembered Harold from her accounting class. <laughs> and I said, well, of course I do. That friend who always sends you flowers. <laughs> we laughed. So she seemed excited and giddy to see him again. She called me after their dinner and said they picked up right where they left off and they had the best time. The rest is history. <laughs> and here we are today. 
to celebrate a beautiful love story. I think Amanda is the right one. I think she is the only one. I am very happy that Amanda is in the picture now because I'm done for the rest of my life. <laughs> I'm doing nothing else. Uh, but no, I'm, I'm completely uh, thankful for the both of them. Definitely thankful for Harold, you know, something that started as a friendship as a young age, turned into a, a brotherhood and then, and now um, we do a lot of business together. So very fortunate to wake up every day, go to work and, uh, and, and do it with my best friend. And I'm very happy that he found the love of his life and was able to achieve that dream as well as his dream of playing golf. Amanda gives my kids facials now. She got my son out of the friend zone. He's got a girlfriend now. Good job, Amanda. <laughs> And in the three years that we've kind of been hanging out with one another, they've lived in 12 houses. And Harold, the first time they moved, he said, hey, David, um, I need you to move my shoes. I'm like, well, shit, how many shoes does a guy have? I mean, this isn't gonna take long. So I pull up to his house and there are shoes on the kitchen, on the dining room table. I'm like, well, that's a little strange. But so I take them and take them to my car and I'm getting ready to leave and Amanda says, Oh no, that's not all of them. Um, there's, a, there's a shoe room upstairs. I said, shoe room? <laughs> so I go upstairs and three hours later, I'm still carrying shoes in my car. It's gonna take a lot of hard work. You know I know. <laughs> I'm up here to know what not to do. <laughs>